Good morning, University Mennonite Church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're joining us by Zoom, welcome, welcome, welcome. We come together to worship as a body of Christ. Ben Weidman always brings together pictures and videos of what's been going on, and members and attenders of the church. And so let's look and see what we've all been doing. Come see the beauty of the Lord. Come see the beauty of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Taste and see, it'll set you free. Come praise the living Lord. When I was down, he raised me up. When I was down, he raised me up, raised me up. He raised me up, filled my empty cup with never-ending love. Come, lose your darkness in his light. Come, lose your darkness in his light. Yeah, yeah. Raise your face. Let it be bathed with never-ending light. Lions go hungry and eagles fall. The world is wider, 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 and oh, so tall. The Lord will hear you when you call, and He'll save you. Yes, he'll save you. You know he'll save you. When you call, the Lord will heal your broken heart. The Lord will heal your broken heart. Call his name, he'll heal your shame and mend your broken heart. Won't you call out his name, he'll heal your shame and mend your broken If you're able, please stand and we'll join in the call to worship. And remain standing for our first hymn. 
Whom do you seek here in this place? Who has told you of God? Discipleship is difficult. Are you ready? Hymnals to number 311, the church is one foundation. church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her he died. Elect from every nation, yet one on all the earth, a charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and with one hope she with every grace endued. Though with a scornful wonder the world sees her oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed, yet saints their watch are keeping their You can note in the bulletin, which we have paper copies here today or which were sent out electronically Friday, I believe, on how you can make donations to University Mennonite Church. And there are various ways it can be done. Um, checks, cash can be put in the basket just out in the lobby. Um, they can be mailed to the treasurer here at the building um, and it can be done digitally online. Let's pray. Holy God, source of all good things, you've blessed your children with many gifts, and each of us can serve and help build your kingdom here on earth. <clears throat> we know at times we have denied our giftedness and denied the impact our gifts can have. 
As we ask you to dedicate our tithes and offerings today, we remind ourselves that you seek not only that we open our wallets, but open our hearts and our whole being to the work of making your love and compassion the norm, not the exception in this world. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. It has been our custom and in many Mennonite churches around the world to write a peace candle. In March 2002, the United States and its allies invaded Iraq. And that war dragged on for 20 years and came to a blistering end last August. We light this lamp in remembrance of all people who struggle and are in the way of wars and civil wars and civil unrest. Our service today is focusing on unity in the body of Christ. So let's take a moment to reflect on ways we can individually foster peace and build community. On this day, mend a quarrel, search out a forgotten friend, dismiss suspicion and replace it with trust, write a love letter, share some treasures, give a soft answer, encourage youth, manifest your loyalty in a word or deed, keep a promise, find the time, forego a grudge, forgive an enemy, listen, apologize if you were wrong, try to understand, flout envy, examine your demands on others, Think first of someone else. Appreciate, be kind, be gentle. Laugh a little more, deserve confidence. Take up arms against malice, decry complacency. Express your gratitude and worship your God. Gladden the heart of a child, take pleasure in the beauty and wonder of the earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it still again. I invite children to come up front and Bethany is going to lead us in a children's time. Good morning, guys. I don't know, do I need a mic? I guess so everyone else can hear, right? And people on Zoom, yeah. There we go. Um, you guys know, here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. I think we could also say, here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the church, right? Because the church is the people and the church is also the building. Today we're going to be thinking about church around the world. So I was thinking this morning of some different kinds of church buildings, different kinds of churches that I've seen or been part of or heard, heard of. Um, and I'm wondering if you all have ever visited another church. Yeah, you've visited other churches. Do you remember um, anything about your visits that you experienced that was different than the way we do church here at UMC? I didn't hear that, Jonas. The nurseries. the nurseries nurseries are different everywhere you go. Sometimes they have good toys, sometimes not so much. Huh? Sometimes you can see into the sanctuary. Yeah, nice. Sometimes you can see from the nursery into the sanctuary. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
Ben and Daniel, do you have anything that you remember about visiting another church? That's right. Some churches sing praise songs, some churches sing hymns, some churches have a big band up front, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I was thinking about all the different ways churches are different, and one of, I, I thought of senses, and churches, some churches sound different, right? Some churches sing, have loud singing and lots of music, even dancing and instruments. Some churches are very quiet. Um, I visited a church once where everybody sat quietly for most of the service and they would wait for God's spirit to tell someone a message and then that person would stand up and share. But otherwise it was just silent. And some churches look different. There are some beautiful elaborate churches with stained glass windows. Have you guys ever been in a church with stained glass windows? My preschool Your preschool has one? Uh huh. Okay. Stained glass windows. Ben and Daniel are remembering that Albright Bethune, which is sort of a sister church to ours, also has beautiful stained glass windows. Some churches have no walls or windows at all. It's just an open pavilion with no walls, and people meet under there, usually where it's pretty hot. Has anyone ever been in a church like that? Anyone? Yes. I see Ken and Laura raising their hands too. Yeah, we've met with our family reunion in a church like that, right, and saying, yeah. Some churches even smell different. Um, I was, went to a wedding one time at an Eastern Orthodox church and someone brought in, um, I forget what they're called, but they're on chains and they have smoke, good smelling smoke coming out of them and they've, wave them, censors, right? They wave them in front of the people who are worshiping and it it's, adds a different kind of sense to worship. So there are so many different kinds of churches. And today we are blessed to have Ndunge bringing us a message. And he comes from, can someone come and tell me where South Africa is on this globe? South Africa. He's living in Indiana now, but today um, he got to know our church when he was living in South Africa. So that's pretty neat that we have Ndungay's perspective today in church. And Zoom makes that possible, doesn't it, for us to hear, do church with people from all over the world at the same time. Yeah, you found it, Jonas? Yeah, that's right, South America. This is South America, mm -hmm. and the other continent is North America mm -hmm. and Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. There's not the South yeah. Pole of North America. Um, another way that we can connect with churches around the world, I brought in my bag today. Um, this is the time of year when you guys are probably getting school supplies ready for school. Not yet, maybe. No. Well. We were at Target this morning, and school supplies are on sale already, so maybe you don't want to think about that yet. But we went and got some, some notebooks this morning, some colored pencils, some erasers, some plain old pencils, and Mennonite Central Committee, which is an organization that works all around the world, and several people in our church have worked for that organization is collecting school kits to send. And I know that you guys have all helped with this before, but here's just a reminder of the things that go in the school kits. Pencils, colored pencils, erasers, rulers, notebooks. Um, and if you can find metal pencil sharpeners, those also, but MCC has lots of those, so they can put them in too. So as you go, as you think about school and returning to school and are going shopping for school supplies, and that goes for all of us, um, we'll have a table in the back where we can put those things as we gather them for about a month or two. Um, a water bottle. Yeah, maybe when you pick up your water bottle, you can grab some notebooks. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I'll say a prayer, and then I'm gonna, I have some instruments here from all around the world that you guys can take with you back to your um, seats to join in to add to our next song. And then make sure you slide them under your pew for the rest of the service, because some of them are kind of loud. All right? So let's pray together. Thank you, God, so much for uh, making us part of a church that is worldwide. I'm so glad that not all churches are just like ours, that you, um, all the different kinds of churches show us who, what you're like. And we pray that you will bless these children as they go out today. And as um, we think of school starting again, bless all our school kits that, are, that will get sent around the world too. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hey, you're welcome to take an instrument. Please turn in your green book, Sing the Journey, to number 78, Sizo Hambanaye, a song from Swaziland, a neighboring country to South Africa. Uh, and let's stand and let's sing this as, with vigor. I'll sing, I'll sing the first verse in the, uh, in the Swaziland uh, language, and then please join with the English, and then we'll sing, repeat the, uh, the Swazi uh, verse after that. So I'll sing it once, and then please join in when we repeat it after the two verses. <clears throat> Si so hambanaye, sorry. Si so hambanaye, wo wo wo. Si so hambanaye, si so hambanaye, wo wo wo. Si so hambanaye, no flow in Jabula. Si so hambanaye, no flow in Jabula. Si so hambanaye. We will walk with God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. Siso hambanaye, wo wo wo. Siso hambanaye, siso hambanaye, wo wo wo. Siso hambanaye, no no encha bula. Siso hambanaye, no no encha bula. Siso hambanaye. Maybe seated. Our scripture reading, oh, our scripture reading this morning is from uh, Ephesians four one through six. Um, it's also listed in your bulletin if you want to follow along. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Our peace lamp has gone out. I don't know if there's symbolism to that. Perhaps it's a nudge from God that we are to work and bring peace into the world. Our speaker this morning is Ndungay Sefu, who came via Congo and South Africa to us here in the States. They and their family are residing in Elkhart, Indiana, and Ndungay and is going to be coming live from Elkhart to share the message with us this morning. Because some of you may not be familiar with Ndungay, I sent him some questions. So what I'm going to read is a question and answer. How did you first learn of University Mennonite? During COVID-19 hard lockdown, Fidel and Leah Lamea invited us to join their church, UMC, online service. I was in Cape Town with the kids. Micheline, his wife, was in Kinshasa. At the first service, the kids and I joined. We enjoyed it, and we invited Micheline to join us the next Sunday service. The rest is history. What was your profession, professions, in South Africa? In Cape Town from 2000 to 2007, I worked retail store assistant manager, then store manager. From 2008 to 2011, I worked as customer service manager at Shell Global Customer Service. From 2012 to 2015, I worked as customer service manager at Amazon.com. From 2016 to 2020, I worked as assistant pastor at Tableview Baptist Church while studying for my Bachelor of Theology at Cape Town Baptist Seminary. I graduated in November 2020. What is your connection with Congo? I was brought up in Congo in a Mennonite Brethren Church, where also Fidel was brought up. That is my home. My whole family lives there. How did you select the Mennonite Seminary, AMBS, in Elkhart, Indiana? A friend of mine from Kikwit, our hometown, lives in Elkhart. When he knew I was about to graduate from seminary in Cape Town, he asked me if I was interested in furthering my studies at AMBS. When will you finish? With what degree? I am pursuing a master's degree in theology and peace studies. I will finish in May 2024, God willing. Thanks for praying for us. The challenges are many but we trust God in all. Brother Ndungue, God's blessings on you as you share this morning's message. Thank you very much, Leah. Can you all hear me in the sanctuary? I just want to, to make sure. Hope, can you put your hands up if you can hear me? Great. Thank you. It is a pleasure and a a privilege to be here this morning and, and uh, sharing the word of God in this manner. And I think um, we thank technology for allowing us this space where we can have perhaps the foretaste of heaven while being distant. And uh, thank Becca for uh, the reading of the word. I felt like there is nothing more to, to preach after such a, uh, a clear reading. The Bible itself has explained. Thank you, Evelyn, for the music, which has taken me a couple miles back to Cape Town, a song from Eswatini, and uh, a song which perhaps remind us that we will walk with God, rejoicing till the kingdom has come. 
we will walk. It is not saying I will walk. It is saying we will walk till the kingdom has come. My greeting this morning is also coming from my family, which is sitting on the other side. I have chosen to come in the uh, building of a school to give the word from here. We greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one true God, Yahweh, the Lord of all, and the God of peace, the God of unity, the one who created heaven and earth in the multiplicity of human ethnicity. He has called us to live in unity as he is three in one and one in three. In the diversities of our communities, God longs to see us live as one. This is Jesus' prayer as he is getting ready to go to the cross and ultimately will depart from his disciples. Jesus prays in John chapter 17, verse 21 to 23, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them as even as you loved me. This is the prayer Jesus is making for his disciple. This is the prayer Jesus is making for the church, for you and I today, that we may be one as he and the Father and the Spirit are one. Nearing his final days of earthly ministry, Jesus prepared his disciples like any good leader will do. And the most important thing he wished and prayed to the Father for his disciple, which is the church today, was unity. Unity. One. The unity of the body of Christ. In other words, the unity of the church of Christ. The text we have just read, written by the prisoners in Christ, the Apostle Paul, to the church of Ephesus. As much as it was relevant for the church of Ephesus then, it is relevant to the church, both local here at UMC and the universal church today. In the world where we have two justices, one for the white, another one for the blacks, one justice for the have and another justice for the have not, one justice for the north rich, another one for the south poor, one justice for the intellectual and bright, and another one for the uneducated, one justice for men, and another one for women. In the world where your wealth and social status determines the level of respect and consideration you get in society, the words of the prisoners of Christ still speak volume. Let us be one eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And peace is a state of reconciliation and love, and therefore acts as a bond, of un a bond to unite believers in Christ. Believers do not create unity, but are to preserve the unity already established by the Father the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And Paul goes and say, make every effort because he knows it is not easy. It doesn't just come flowing like a walk in the park. Make every effort. Jesus is calling us 
his church to unity. This unity goes beyond our differences of intellectual caution, wealth, sexual orientation, cultures, ethnicity, popularity, political obedience, etc. In fact, what Paul is saying in this piece of scripture is that brothers and sisters, God have called you from different background. He has brought you in his kingdom to be part of his household, the ecclesia, to be partakers of his glory. Therefore, whether you are rich, poor, genuine or intellectually challenged, male or female, straight or different orientation, make every effort to maintain and sustain unity in your diversity. In our diversity, let us make every effort to maintain unity. Beloved in Christ, keeping unity in the church is not easy because we are different, because we all don't perceive things in the same way, because our opinions are different. And bringing that together is not easy. But there's a brother who will say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. We can only sing that and hope that by faith, as Paul is saying that one faith, one baptism, if we live a life in unity, life of unity. Paul is writing this letter to a church which is struggling at that time. The background is that the Apostle Paul was at certain point the initiator of the church of Ephesus. The word Ephesus means desirable. And in many ways, it was certainly a desirable place to live. Perhaps like America is today, a desirable place where everybody think that is where milk and honey is flowing. In the ancient world, Ephesus was a center of travel and trade situated on the eager sea at the mount of the Kaiser River. The city was one of the greatest seaport of the ancient world. We are told in Acts chapter 18, verse 19, that on Paul's second missionary's journey around 52 AD, he visited Ephesus and after leaving Corinth and evidently he planted the church there. We are also told in Acts 19, verse eight till 10, that in his third missionary journey, around 54 and 56, Paul spent between two and three years teaching in the city of Ephesus. He spent his time addressing false doctrine and pagan practices. Having planted and loved the church of Ephesus, Paul recommends his spiritual son, Timothy, to remain there. Here is what Paul is saying to Timothy the pastor of the church of Ephesus. In Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 till 4, he says, As I urged you upon my departure from Macedonia, remain on at Ephesus so that you may instruct certain men and women not to teach strange doctrines, nor to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies, which give rise to mere speculation rather than feathering the administration of God, which is by faith. Paul's concern with the, Paul's concern will be echoed later by the Lord Jesus Christ as he instructs John to write to the angel of the church of Ephesus in Revelation chapter two and verse two to seven. He compliments them on their good works but rebukes them for leaving their first love. Revelation chapter two, verse four. He commands immediate action. Here is what 
the Bible is saying in the Revelation says, remember, repent and return to the first love, the first works. The passage ends with another letter R. If you do not repent, I will remove your lampstand. And this is a warning. The church of Ephesus, like our churches today, was going through so many problems. And some of the problems, Greg Caruso will comment that the church by that time had some difficult problems and had apparently undergone a church split. False teachers had risen in the church who claimed to have deeper knowledge of the things of God. They claimed to have the secret to knowing Christ, but in reality, they denied his bodily incarnation and his deity. They thought, they taught many other heretical concepts. Their motive may have been to take some elements of pagan religion and blend them with Christianity in order to make it more acceptable to the pagan culture. Perhaps we are in the same trap today where we try and please the world outside there and bring what they believe are in the church in order to please. David Wilson Rogers in teaching on the problems of the church of Ephesus says, the true danger faced by the church of Ephesus were the rulers and authority of the age that had embraced the cosmic powers of evil in order to legitimize power blessing and favor in the present age. In forsaking its original love for Jesus Christ, the church at Ephesus had embraced power and control rather than service, sacrifice and love. Rather than embrace the grace of Christ, it had adopted a theology of hate and anger as the means of perpetuating its reign. Instead of holding to God's truth, the church had restored to a teaching of fear and perpetrated that fear in order to influence others for its own evil, unquote. Does this sound like the state of the church today? Like the church in America? Like many other churches in Africa? Like the churches in Asia? Are we striving to please, to get the political will influences the way we do church? Are we trying to, to, to compromise what the truth of the word is and there so being divided and lose the unity? Let us look inside our church locally for a minute and then reflect to the church globally. Have we noticed something? Those who have been in the church for the past 50 years, even 30, 40, even maybe 10, 10 years, have we noticed anything as far as church growth is concerned? You remember the days when we, most of us had friends, friends from our church? Do you remember when weekly meetings and Bible studies were more than once a week? Do we recall when we didn't get bored of the things of the church? The early church lived in one accord. They were sharing everything. They were brothers and sisters. They didn't get bored with the things of God. In fact, they were excited. They were looking forward because they knew they were serving one God. They had one faith and that God was Lord of all. Paul says to the church, walk in the manner worthy of the adoption, holiness and unity to which you were called. Folks, God called us to live a life of holiness. In other words, a life set apart. We are in this world but we are not of this world. Paul uses seven times the word one. 
one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Someone made a joke. He says, how come we see many churches, many denominations, but all of them only have one Satan who is attacking them all the time. And many of the time as believers, we tend to focus to our local churches. We tend to focus to our denominations and we lose sight that one day we will all get to heaven. One day we will all bow before him, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that is to be starting here, to live as one. The challenge we face today as the church of Ephesus faced then is the me, myself and I mindset. The hunger for greatness and self-accomplishment have become the dominant force amongst us. Some are Republicans, others are Democrats. Some are Russians, others are Ukrainians. Some are Congolese, others are Rwandans. Some are Blacks, others are white. Some are citizens and others are immigrants. In the midst of all this, we have chosen to forget our true identity, our identity, which is the beloved children of God created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And this is Paul speaking again to the Ephesians chapter two and verse 10. Brothers and sisters, there are so many those who are dying without Christ God counts on us for the survival and the expansion of the church in this world. And we can do that only if we are living as one, if we are considering the other as my brother and my sister. We have become even more divided amongst us, calling ourselves names rather than our common identity. We call ourselves, we are Mennonites. They are Baptists, Methodists, Lutherans, Charismatics, Orthodox, Pentecostal, and you name them. And we are fighting amongst us as if in heaven, we will find a county for Mennonites and another one for the Baptist and a state for the Western and another one for the global South. One will think our denominations are bigger than our Christianity. It is easy today to ask someone, who are you? And someone tells you, I am a Baptist. I am an Orthodox. I am a Methodist. Jesus, when teaching his disciples how to pray, he started with the word, our Father. That is all of us Father not the Mennonite father, not the Baptist father, not the Lutheran father, but our father. A question I would like to ask us this morning is, how do you see yourself? A Christian first or a Mennonite first? A Christian first or a Lutheran first? If your answer is the latter, meaning a Baptist, a Mennonite, a Presbyterian, I encourage you to reconsider and repent because those classifications, instead of building one church of Christ, have made us focus in only our little circle and our churches are becoming more as clubs of friends instead of becoming the body of Christ. And today, even patriotism, loyalty to our countries are becoming more of a religion. And we're forgetting that one day, those who are our foes today, as long as they are in Christ, those are the people we will partake eternal life with, with the Lord Jesus. I submit to us this morning, there is only one God, and that God is the one God 
for the Mennonites. He's the one God for the Baptists. He's the one God for the Pentecostal. There's only one God and Father of all. And that God urges us to make every effort to maintain unity in the spirit, in the bond of peace. Paul is urging the church of Ephesus, make every effort because he knows this cannot just come easily and with a human nature. Unity is a spiritual thing. Unless we treat it in that manner, we are fighting a losing battle. We have so many organizations around the world. In fact, in this very country where we are is where the headquarter of the United Nation is. They're saying United Nation. The world want to have one nation. The world want to have unity and build peace. Oh, sadly, how much we're seeing that in the midst of that United Nation, that's where also where wars and conflicts are being spoken. In fact, wars and conflict being encouraged for the interest of the ones and the loss of the others. This morning, brothers and sisters, the word of the one who was sitting from a prison cell and writing to a church he so much loved. He says, make every effort to reach out to the other, make every effort to live in unity. Are we united? Are we seeing the others as those we will live together? Are we seeing that Jesus Christ being the foundation of the church and all of us part of him? There is a say in my village that the face, your face, cannot laugh at the finger when the finger is dirty. When the finger is dirty, the face shouldn't laugh because this is the same finger as dirty as it is, which will clean the face. As Mennonite as we are, as Baptist as we are, as Presbyterian as we are, do we see the other people on the other side, in the other building, in the other continent as brothers and sisters? Are their problems really touching us? Are we sharing, sharing our sorrows and joy and being really like the children of the same father? Perhaps the answer, if we can examine deep down, will have uh, not a big yes. Because many of the time we are regarding ourselves as the people of this group or the other group. This morning, the word is saying, let us live in unity. Let us strive. Let us make every effort to see that unity here on earth. Because that unity we start here on earth, that which we will continue in heaven. If we don't have it here, it will be a sad day because in heaven, we're not going to have a heaven for the straight, a heaven for the gays and lesbians, a, a heaven for the white, a heaven for the blacks, a heaven for Americans, a heaven for Africans, Asians, or Indians. Let us start building unity here and start having a foretaste of heaven right here on earth. May God bless the listening of his word. Amen. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the 
He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand. Underneath the starry sky, far from the lights of town, I felt a tug upon my heart to turn my head around. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand. One day while walking down the street, wiping my tears away, a child appeared, said, don't you fear, help is on the way. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand. Long ago, my heart was whole and then it broke in two. But a bomb was laid upon the break, and now it beats so true. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand. down to the marketplace thought I heard somebody say there's a God above with a store of love he wants to give away he's got the whole world in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got the whole world in his hand he's got you and me and all that we see right there in his hand So I'm wondering if, um, if there are any visitors today in the sanctuary or on Zoom. And if so, if you want to introduce yourself, please do. If you, someone is with you, they could do that for you if you want. It's good to see you all here in the sanctuary on Zoom. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries celebrated this week? that anyone would like to share. Slow week for birthdays and anniversaries. Okay. Any announcements? Uh, hi, my name is Ankit Saxena and I wanted to make an announcement on behalf of the fellowship committee. We are hoping to bring back fellowship meals starting next Sunday. So we will be throwing a church picnic at Tussie View Park right behind the church and I'll be grilling some hot dogs and burgers and we're gonna have some drinks and uh, if you guys plan on attending feel free to bring a side dish and uh, yeah pray for some sunny weather and hope to see everyone there thanks it's always good to do a few things again thank you for doing that next week excellent Okay. Please stand if you are able, and Ndungay will give us our benediction. As we get to the end of this service, my brothers and sisters in Christ, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. Now, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May you go in peace, brothers and sisters.